the relationship clinic. But before we get to the clinic, we have to pass by Egypt, we get to Israel, and then we'll come back to the clinic. Israel via Egypt trip is happening next month, the 30th of May to the 9th of June 2023. Last two years, we've not been able to do this trip. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for you. I'm talking to you who's a bit, you're still dilly-dallying. Should I take it this year? Maybe I wait next year. No one has a guarantee for next year. The opportunity is right now. You seize the moment, as T.D. Jakes would say. This is a trip that will change your life. This is a trip that will bring clarity and perspective to your Bible reading. Come away and in Christ. I usually say every Christian, if possible, should take this trip at least once in their lifetime. Because what this trip does for you, it cements some things you've read about in the Bible. It's not just something you read. It's not just a story. You actually see the places. And some of the places have been so well preserved. It's unbelievable. You know, you get to go to the Mount of Olives. You get to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. You get to go to Jerusalem, you know, and follow the path that Jesus followed as he carried the cross, the way of the cross. You get to go to the garden where they buried him. You get to enter into the tomb where they laid him to confirm he is not there. He is not there, my friend. So many places to visit, so much history. Learn about Jewish culture. You know, when you read the Bible and it says they walked from here to here, when you read the Christmas story and, uh, you know, Jesus has been born and the angel warns uh, Joseph, take the mother and the child and flee to Egypt. You know, it's not like... <laughs> my friend, it's a journey through the wilderness. It brings perspective. You appreciate some of the things you read about. So here's what I want you to do. Call Francis. Francis is our coordinator for this trip. You can call him on 0715 Not tomorrow, today. Call him, get the details, plan, be a part of this trip. Let's make this journey to Israel in 2023 and uh, grow in our faith and in our understanding of the word. Okay, Nimefungua Clinic. Relationship Clinic is now open officially. The reception to Liosha Jana, Ilipakwa Rangi, so don't lean on the wall. Wet paint. <laughs> you forgot to put the sign. Today we want to talk about love on the spectrum. What does that mean? This week is Autism Awareness Week on Jam 316. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We've been having conversations since Monday and creating awareness about autism. I've learned quite a bit. Today we want to zero in on autism and how it can affect relationships. How do you manage? So that's the conversation. Two amazing ladies joining me in studio. First, we have Mutua Hesabu, as I'm calling her. <laughs> She's an accountant. Uh, Wamboi Mwiruri, how are you doing? Oh, fine, thank you. Karibu sana. Thank you so much good for having me. Good to have you on, on set today. Thank you so much. I'm and glad to be here. Yes, and then we have a businesswoman, Lucy Karo Mothoni. Ohoro. Timoru. Karibu sana. Asante sana. It's good to have you. Thank you. Both of you have children who are autistic. Yes. Yes. Let's begin with you, Lucy. Mm. How old is your child? My son is uh, 4.9, going to five years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So at what point did you discover that uh, he's autistic? Uh, at around the age of two, two and a half. Mm -hmm. Two, two and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some of the things you noticed that caused you to uh, get him diagnosed? Okay, at first it was very confusing mm -hmm. because you, most of the times you hear people say terrible too. Yes. And I keep <laughs> thinking when they meant terrible too, yeah. it could actually have been autism, just that they didn't know how to define it. Oh. Because uh, terrible too, you know, most people w would define it as hyperactivity, mm -hmm. you know, which mm -hmm. are some of the things that an autistic child has. Yeah. So at around two, my son would be that terrible too, but extreme. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, he at around before he got to, he had speech. He would call mom, mm -hmm. and you'd call him. He would respond. But when we got maybe two, two and uh, two and a half there about, he lost his speech completely. Yeah, he would just uh, he would not actually respond to anything. Okay, and the speech went. Yeah, and he lost his eye contact. Yeah, some, mm -hmm. something that was so alarming because you would walk in a room, he wouldn't even, it's like you're not it's there. It's like you're not there. Yeah, you would just pass, he wouldn't even look at you. Mm -hmm. So I realized something was wrong, but I was not able to know exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. 
So at that point, you know, you get confused. You don't know whether the child is okay. You don't know whether the child has a problem. So you're asking yourself, is this normal? Mm -hmm. When uh, you compare with the other mothers, you see there's something, something off. Something is off, yeah. But you're not able to pin what exactly is this going mm -hmm. on. So until there was an article on the newspaper about autism. Mm -hmm. So the dad at work read the newspaper. Mm. And then he called me and it was in the morning and then he's like, hi, you know the things you talk about? Yes. Our son, I've seen like some of them are in this newspaper. So I asked him to forward me. So when he forwarded me, I could see signs of autism, mm -hmm. eye contact, hyperactivity. And I was so sure I've seen this with my son. Mm -hmm. But you know, at first you don't want to you admit. Don't want to admit yeah. So you're still doubting, is it? Could it be? No, mm. he's terrible too. No, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So at that point, uh, now I started figuring out what to do next. Mm -hmm. So what I, I went to Google and I was like, well, where to take an autistic child, yes. who to see. Uh -huh. So I saw a neurologist, a neurologist. Mm -hmm. So I looked for a neurologist at Kenyatta Hospital. Mm -hmm. We took him there mm -hmm. and my fears were confirmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about for you? How, how did you make the discovery? Um, his so my son turns out that he has a few conditions at the same time. Oh. He has mild CP as mm -hmm. well as being autistic. Mm -hmm. And the journey started from him having delayed milestones. Mm -hmm. So we started noticing there was a problem when he wasn't able to walk. Mm -hmm. So now from starting the journey to trying to get him to walk before anything else yeah. is when now you get the other um, diagnosis along the way. Mm -hmm. So it was first now we started with he's not walking, let's help him walk. Mm -hmm. And then along the way now, when you go to a doctor and you're saying, I'm here because he's not walking, then they tell you, no, we are noticing other things. It's not just the walking. Oh. So we are noticing other delayed milestones. So yeah. they now start asking you. So I think at around 18 months when you are trying to figure out the walking thing, mm -hmm. is when I saw a pediatrician who now start asking the, all the comprehensive questions. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at your child. Did he do this? Did he do this? And then you're realizing, oh, he had delayed milestones. Yeah. At that point in time, you weren't quite aware because, yes, you're going for clinics, but no one is telling you that they can see a problem. Mm -hmm. So he's gotten all his vaccinations, he's gotten all his clinics, he's meeting his birth weight. Mm -hmm. There's nothing really you're seeing. But now is when they're telling you, so he's not working. When did he start sitting properly? Mm -hmm. When did he hold up his head? And then you start realizing historically yeah. there might have been a problem. Yeah. So now when we are walking through that journey of discovering, yes, he has a mild CP that has affected his left side, then they tell you, oh, now we can also see signs of autism because mm -hmm. now his sensory, now at around 18 is when the sensory issues started coming in. So sensory issues are now when the child doesn't like being touched in a particular way. Mm -hmm. So when you, he then want, you notice he then want to be shaved or he didn't want uh -huh. things touching his head or even putting his feet on the ground. It's so sensitive. So then you start walking the journey. So I didn't get a full complete diagnosis. I think until he was about three mm -hmm. is when now we were able to sort of do the checklist. He has this, he has this, mm -hmm. this has not happened. Therefore, he's on the spectrum as well as some form of CP. Okay. Um, then from there, now you start figuring out what is it that he needs? Mm -hmm. And because of the two diagnoses at the same time, yeah. you have to sort of decide what are you tackling first? Mm -hmm. So we tackle the CP so that he can walk. And then after that, now we start dealing with the autism on its own because um, the therapist's focus was getting him as independent as possible. Okay. So him needing to walk, him needing to just calm down enough so that he can be accommodated in a school setting. Mm -hmm. So that was the journey. Okay. Yes. I'm just curious for both of mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. how did this discovery and the beginning of this journey affect your relationships? Because I'm thinking now, all focus shifts to the child. Because, okay, we've discovered this and this and this. Okay, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. Did that have any impact on your relationship? I don't think the diagnosis affected the relationship yes. as such okay. um, but I do know that it disproportionately falls on the mom to try and find the solutions yes. and so yes. you are so focused on what is next what is next mm -hmm. what is next that I, I do I do remember at some point in time saying 
that I don't feel like I'm being helped. Mm. And mm. they were like, but you're the one who knows all the answers. Exactly. And I'm like, I don't know all the answers. Um, I am figuring it out as I go. Mm -hmm. So I do know that the the diagnosis did not affect the relationship but it definitely affects the dynamic yes because how you relate all the conversations are it stops you even stop focusing on how we're relating as people yeah. it is now what are we doing for the child mm -hmm. yes so it definitely affects all avenues of communication mm -hmm. it affects um any other focus that you may have it it even affects <laughs> your ability to have normal life so and so because mm -hmm you're so tired and frustrated and thinking about autism all the time there's no other way to look you don't have time to look at anything else okay. so i do understand that very very frustrating dynamic okay yes. was it the same for you yeah it was the same for me mm -hmm. because i even remember the person i'm comparing with at some point saying i don't want to do anything because sometimes i had to quit everything i'm doing because you know you mm. face challenges with the nannies every now and then. Yes. Because you know they are not trained to handle the special kids. Eh? Mm -hmm. So you bring in a nanny, you have a son who is hyper. So she's always running, running, running. Yes. So you will have a nanny this week, she will take off, have another one next week. Mm -hmm. You can have as many as possible. So what happens when the nanny leaves? You are left to take care of your child. Yeah. So everything you are doing stops. You know, mm -hmm. and I am in business, so I have to stop doing, I have to be. You have to be there, like, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing I could do at that point mm -hmm. because I felt my son needed me more. Definitely. Yeah, because I also had not understood him fully mm -hmm. and I have no regrets that I stopped everything I was doing mm -hmm. because it made me understand him better mm -hmm. than anybody else. And me being around, I was able to interact with my neighbors and maybe help them understand the condition better uh -huh. and treat him better okay because now the environment you live around is very important for yes. you because one thing about these hyperactivity kids is he can he takes off all the time so if their gate is not locked he'll just take off and disappear mm. so it's very important that you create time to let people know what you're going through mm -hmm. so that they're able to help because this is a child they'll find running anywhere. Mm -hmm. I remember at one point he sneaked in a neighborhood where there is chicken. Mm. He entered somebody's bedroom and uh, the owner of the house didn't realize. Uh -huh. So they are hearing somebody jumping in the bedroom. They are like, who is that? So when they go to check, it's him. He sneaks out. He goes out. He finds there is uh, some chicken outside. He opens and he starts playing with the chicken. Wow. They don't know this child. This is not a child who will say my name is so yeah. and so. Yeah. So I took all that time to let the community I live around mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. my child is like this and uh, you need to try and accept him the yeah. way he is. That yeah. has really helped me. So me, I, I felt at first, yes, the same thing she said. Mm -hmm. You feel like everything, you're left to handle everything, yeah. which is true. Most of the times yeah. we are. Because even, especially in the case where you're doing co-parenting, mm -hmm. this person comes in to see the child maybe once in a while. Mm -hmm. They might come and give you all the money you need, but it's not the money you need. It's not the money you need. Yeah, even in a situation where a child needs a shave, uh, I would wish that that person would be around, would be the person coming to do the shaving and all that, so he can also develop a relationship with this child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, these kids, they, they, don't com they, they are non-verbal, yeah. but there's a way they communicate. Like my son is very touchy, mm -hmm. so you'll find him trying to hug you and all that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you wish this other parent would be there to experience, to that. experience that. Because even when he comes, you'll see him running to him, lift me up, put me down. So he's just maybe trying to express, I need you to do this mm -hmm. often, mm -hmm. you see? Okay. But I have no way to tell you. Okay. So you'll see him trying to raise his hands like to be lifted. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed he, when he sees a man, that's what he's doing. Mm. Yeah, I need you to lift me lift up. Me up. Yeah. Okay. So, I, uh, how I would wish they would understand. Okay. Yeah. You know, something you said before we, we zero in on the co-parenting, because mm -hmm. both of you are in a co-parenting situation. There's something you mentioned and I thought, because I've had cases of um, couples mm -hmm. who uh, they discover they have a special needs child. And I've had stories of... Uh, men who disappear. Now, mm. I'm not saying that is what happened in no, your it cases, not. <laughs> but I've had quite a number of stories, and I'm just trying to connect that with, with what you said. The assumption that you as a mother, 
because by nature you're a natural you should know everything mm. <laughs> yeah, i don't know what to do <laughs> i'm looking to you yeah. to know anything yeah, uh, to know, to tell me what to do or yeah. you know i feel like i can't do anything yes. because this child is so delicate mm, yeah. you're the one to handle mm -hmm. her yes. so should should couples who come to the place where they discover that they have a special needs child should they go through some sort of counseling and some sort of equipping mm -hmm. to yes. know how to manage now as a couple? Yes, it is very, very, very important. Very, very important. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is it's very true. important. Very and, important. And because you now have to parent differently. Okay. It will affect your relationship. Yes. And it will affect even the relationship with the child. And here's the thing why I, I counseling is so important. Mm -hmm. Because the old expectations you had mm -hmm. of your parental journey mm -hmm. are gone. Even you your need as yes, husband and wife. it is gone. You need to confront the new reality, and that is why, unfortunately, many men disappear because they are like, this child in front of me is not what I signed up for. I signed mm. up mm. for the active child. Yes. I signed up for the child who I'll take for soccer tournaments yes. and for sporting and we'll go to the playground and we'll have fun i did not sign up for this child who i have to technically take care of all the time mm -hmm. and because i didn't sign up for this i am out of the door mm -hmm. without that proper counseling there may be instances in which you're in the same home but you're still not on the same page uh -huh. because um men tend to be and, and and i don't want to i don't want to go into the gender wars but <laughs> here um most men will take it from a point of, I am taking care of the future of this child if he's still involved. Mm -hmm. So he'll go about looking for the money mm -hmm. to ensure sure. that this child is financially um, provided for, oh, yes. for the future. Yes. But here's the problem. The child still needs to grow up. Mm -hmm. And you're not being involved in the current, very real needs of the child. So you're, you're give the, the burden is on the mother. Mm -hmm. And that is where the, the fight starts to come in. Okay. Because you'll be like, you're not pulling your weight. That mm -hmm. he'll be like, no, I am taking care of the family. Yes. Yeah. But currently, the child needs, it's fine, they need the money. And unfortunately, getting access to special needs services is so yes. expensive. Yes, we talked so about that yesterday. Yes, you're getting the money for the special needs services. But the problem is, at the end of the day, you still have to sit at home with the child and mm -hmm. make sure. Um, so even when you're getting the interventions at, at the, sa and the services, mm -hmm. you still need to be home and do a lot of the things and for continuity mm -hmm. and so that the child is also comfortable in a family environment. So if the family dynamic is not working, here's yeah. the thing most people don't understand. Autistic children are so sensitive. They pick up on oh. strain, on strife, on on yeah. changes in the home. Mm -hmm. So if the couple relationship has been affected, yeah. then the child becomes more aggressive. They, you see them fighting a lot more and you're like, is it the autism or is it the child? Mm -hmm. But because they can't express their emotions, they're also being frustrated with the family dynamic. Okay. And it's very important for people to understand. So yes, couples need to go for counseling mm -hmm. so that they understand that now that you have a special needs child, you'll also need to work on your relationship a lot harder mm -hmm. because the child gets a lot more focus. Okay. Yes. Something you want to add? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and this, uh, okay. When uh, he was diagnosed with autism, mm. I would say the neurologist was of very much help to me mm -hmm. because he, I don't know whether it's uh, about, I don't know if it's scientific or what, but he mentioned that the gene for autism mm -hmm. is in men. Mm -hmm. Is in a male, not in a female. Mm -hmm. So that way, <laughs> kind of helped me in the, helped me la, like uh, he wouldn't say, you know, most of the times when the child has a problem, yes. he always says he's a woman. Yes. So that way, I felt it helped me because mm -hmm. after that, mm -hmm. he was involved in every therapy I was going at ah, Kenyatta. Nice. And uh, I have gone for therapies at Kenyatta, uh -huh. and currently I'm doing it at Kise, Kenya mm -hmm. Institute yes. of Special Education. Yes. Because there they have hydrotherapy, and Kenyatta doesn't. Okay. So, uh, when I'm doing these therapies, uh, let me see, the men in Kenya need to step up. Oy. <laughs> because yes. these kids, mm. you will never find people going in as couples. Oh, really? Yes. The women are neglected. What? Yes. 
they are, they'll tell you stories, you will cry tears. And when I was at Kenyatta, in fact, the doctor used to tell me, Mama Joel, don't forget you are also a patient because I would leave what I'm doing, I would go to talk to those women. Mm -hmm. They would tell me, do you know how lucky you are? This man is with you here because most women are neglected. And I felt the fact that the neurologist pointed out the gene is in a male. Mm. So he felt he, his, this child is not about me. Mm -hmm. It's about him also. Mm. So I'm also doing therapies currently at Kise. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you the same situation is at Kise. I'm just curious, could it be that it's um, not, I'm trying to think like a man. <laughs> could it be that it's not that the men don't care mm -hmm. or no. they're not concerned. Mm -hmm. It's just that the dynamics are different. Something you said, him, his thinking, you know, phew, you can go for therapy today. Yeah. You go with the child for therapy. Mm -hmm. I have to figure out where the next Millions therapy mm -hmm. is going to happen and how yes. it's going to happen and how we are going to eat. And so I have to be out there because then if it's not teamwork, because this child needs to be with somebody, and like you said earlier, mm. it's hard to get a nanny mm -hmm. who will be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get one, you hold on to them dearly. But yeah. if you don't have one, then naturally, mm -hmm. the mother you is the one stop. inclined to stay yeah. with the yeah. child. Yeah. The gentleman has gone out hunting and gathering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I can't be out hunting and gathering and still be it's, there for yeah. therapy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It may sound like an excuse, mm. but sometimes finding that balance is hard. Yes. Finding the balance is very hard. Uh -huh. And we are not saying... I think in her case, it's, it's, it's very good to hear that he attended all the therapies. Yes. And we are not saying that you need to attend all the therapies. Mm -hmm. We are saying the support. The support. And, and here's an example. You asked about um, how the relationship of the couple will change. Mm -hmm. Are you able to talk to your partner about the frustrations you have bringing up this autistic child? Okay. It could be as simple as that. Okay. So when I start talking about, and I'm not saying this is what happened in my case, but mm -hmm. it's something that I've observed. If I start talking about the frustrations I'm going through, you take it as if, A, I'm complaining that you're not doing enough, mm -hmm. or B, um, I want you to now come to the therapies, and yet maybe all I wanted to do was just express my frustrations with mm -hmm. something that was going on. Okay. So you see, even the emotional support that should be there in a relationship yeah. is withdrawn because of the challenges that you're facing, okay. and that is how the relationship ends up disintegrating. Wow. Yes. Relationship clinic, love on the spectrum. We are looking at uh, how autism affects relationships. We are hanging out with Lucy Karamodoni and Wamboe Moirori sharing with us the experiences and some of the lessons they have learned. If you have any questions for them, 20316 is the SMS line and the WhatsApp number is 786 316 Terry in Mombasa, you say love on the spectrum exactly on point. Mungu awape wa mama more grace. I hear you more. Thank you very much. And uh, you say thanks for this week. All my parents are listening in this week and they are getting more knowledge. Asante sana. Thank you for telling them uh, to listen in. Good morning, Pasi. This week you have done well bringing light to special needs. I'm a church worker with uh, kids 0 to 14. The young mothers who uh, ain't even sure bring their kids to Sunday school and they don't say anything, leaving us wondering. Or they come to ask, do you think my child has ABC? Mkonakazi. May the Lord equip you in that work that you are doing. Okay, back to this conversation, uh, uh, Lucy. Mm -hmm. At that point where now, okay, this relationship is not working. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a child involved. This child has got special needs. So you decide... Let's go our different ways. Yes. How does that affect you? Because you're left with a child. It's like you're left with a bad, with the, with the, with the, mzigoyote ya umtoto ni sasa, so to speak. Do you feel abandoned? Do you feel betrayed? What emotions do you go through? There are all those sort of emotions. Mm -hmm. Yes, abandoned. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, frustrated at times. Most of the times you are, right? Eh? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes there's, uh, you know, these, with these autistic kids, you're never sure of what they'll do next. Eh? Okay. So I remember there is something he did, and uh, I really wanted to call him and tell him, oh, he's, he started doing this, this, this. Mm -hmm. And you know, at times, you, all you need is someone to tell you it's going to be fine. Yeah. So maybe you try and call at times, they're not picking your calls. Mm -hmm. So I remember at that point, I had to call my therapist at Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. And he was very supportive. He told me, call me any time. Mm -hmm. So, you not being with that person every day, mm -hmm. 
you're not able to like go through the journey with him mm -hmm. you know what i mean like that time he would have been there he would have seen what i'm experiencing mm -hmm. and he would have gone through it together yeah but now i'm trying to reach out to you mm -hmm. you will even find somebody texting you please call me later oh. not knowing how maybe urgent it is yes and uh, now you have to think of who next to call. Mm -hmm. So me, the person I think next of calling is maybe my dad. Mm -hmm. And also, like she said, friends mm. who you find supportive, who are of really much help. Yeah, it really affects, I don't know, at this point, that is exactly how I feel today. Today? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Same, same, same case for you or slightly different? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> so very different uh -huh. in that, um, my co-parent and I are very close friends. Okay. Very close friends. Mm -hmm. And it has been a work in progress. It uh -huh. has been a work in progress to go through all the emotions of parenting separately mm -hmm. to get to this point now whereby in case I need to talk about the child, yeah. he is the first phone call because uh -huh. we have gotten to the point whereby I can, he understands that times I just need to talk about the child and, mm -hmm. and what is going on. And because my son is grown up right now, he's, he's turning 10. Okay. We have gone through a lot. Mm -hmm. We are now in a very calm stage. Ah. So I am not making f panicking phone calls. It's usually just an update. Oh my, he did this. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. We've seen this progress. So because I am a lot further out, the, the, the tension is very, very reduced. Okay. And, and fine, I could, and, and here's the thing, I could choose to be resentful mm -hmm. and say, because you weren't there in the thick of it for mm -hmm. the past five years, mm -hmm. I am very resentful, we're not talking about it. But this is the way I choose to see it. My son has a love for men. I can't even dispute it. Mm -hmm. It is their evidence. He loves male teachers, he loves male therapists, he just... He, I take him to a crowd, he'll identify a man in the thing of it mm. and just bond with him for the rest of the day. Mm. And it would be unfair for me to be a stumbling block yeah. in the relationship with his father mm -hmm. just because of the history. Okay. And so because of that, the co-parenting situation is very, um, what is it called, amicable right now. Mm -hmm. we, we can talk about the child, the child loves seeing his father, um, even the sister loves seeing her father and mm -hmm. they are all together. And so I would say this, because we got, uh, we are able to talk better right now, yeah. it makes the co-parenting a lot easier. Okay. So communication is important, mm -hmm. even when, whether you're in the same house or whether you're, or not, whether you're not, you still need to be able to communicate. Okay. Yes. Just out of curiosity and to clear the air before somebody asks this question, mm -hmm. because I know it will come. <laughs> Did your relationships uh, end because... You have a special needs child. Was that one of the reasons, no. or was it? No, 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 no. Because people will make assumptions. No, 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 no. no, no. If yeah. it was, I can assure you for a fact, yeah. the relationships that end because the child has special needs, mm -hmm. the father yeah. is never seen again. Uh -huh. That is a fact. Yes. Okay. Mm. okay. This ended because the relationship was, was not working. working. Not because of the child having special needs. Okay. Did did the the, the situation of the child contrib contribute to the relationship not? working because like you said earlier on in terms of uh, everything changes mm -hmm. yeah you you end up not paying enough attention to your relationship because yes. the child needs the child needs we need to figure out we need to figure out and so you end up neglecting maybe your communication mm -hmm. maybe you don't have time for one another anymore you're not deliberate about you know detaching from this for a day or two and just spending time building up the relationship could mm -hmm. that also be in scenario. my case, no, it was okay. not the special needs okay. at all, at, at all. all. It was just the relationship really was not was working, not working. Okay. at all. Okay. What about for your case? Yeah, even my case is not about the special needs child. It's not mm. about my son mm. being special. Mm. It had its own other reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yes, it contributes to maybe sometimes going further. And mm -hmm. unlike her... Uh, she's way ahead of me. Yes. So as maybe I was talking to her, she said her son is a bit older. Mm -hmm. So I think her being on the journey for like 10 years, it's mm -hmm. not the same as me at four, four years. years. Mm -hmm. And you see, we discovered uh, my child had it at around two. So we've been in the journey maybe less than two years. Mm -hmm. So we maybe as we go on, eh, yeah. it will get better. better. He will have understood better. Okay. I will, under, I've underst I will understand myself better. Mm -hmm. And maybe it will be different, okay. but I just pray it will 
it mm. will make a difference. Okay. Time will, yeah. Okay. It's, it's one, one of the things we talked about yesterday and you mentioned today is, uh, you know, the cost of these therapies and all these things mm -hmm. is quite high. Very high. So are you both getting financial support as you co-parent? Yes. Yes, we are. Ah. Yeah. Okay. For that, yeah. yeah. Ah, one has fear. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that one I cannot fear. complain. Yes, that's good. <laughs> Listen to this. Good morning. Thanks for the talks on autism this week. We have learned a lot. Now, I've realized that autism affects boys more than more. And they really need a male, male figure in their life. Is that true? Yes. Yes, it yes. It affects men okay. more. Yeah, yes. that's what I, yeah, it affects men oh. more. Yes. The gene is in male. So if you even go for those therapies, you'll find like it's one girl, 10 boys. Oh. Or even oh. 15. 15 yeah. or even 20. They are all boys. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. So this gentleman says, I'm assuming it's a gentleman. Uh, we have learned a lot. Now I have realized that autism affects boys more and they really need a male figure in their lives. I know the women are overwhelmed, but is there a way they ensure that a male model spends time with the boys? Also, how do they take care of themselves, at least to have me time and stay sane in this whole parenting <laughs> agenda? Is there a support group for parents? Yes, sane is, is very relative. Um, yes. <laughs> so I'll, I'll address the first part. Yeah. As I've just said, my son loves male figures. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you'll encounter one. A lot of the professionals in the special needs world are women. Mm -hmm. So where are you finding male therapists? A lot of the teachers are women. Oh. Where are you finding male teachers? A lot of the, um, what else, the other specialist group. So even the professionals in the field yeah. are women. Yeah. So there is a definite lack of male figures in the special needs sector. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. So you have to be very deliberate. Okay. So this is where your sense of community comes in. And for me, I've been very... So I may not be in a marriage right now, mm -hmm. but I have... Tr my, my circle, this comes to the second part, how mm -hmm. do I stay sane? Yeah. I, have ver I have a very close circle of friends okay. um, who are married couples. And because they welcome me and my children into their home, mm -hmm. my children get to see a view of male figures, um, loving parents, and they are welcomed just as any other child in any other home. And so they get to see that love and they have male figures. So my children don't lack male figures in their life. Mm -hmm. and, and also now because of the co-parenting situation, which is so important, they know their father. Okay. He knows his father. He, he, even if he has that yearning, for male attention, it is not overboard because he already has a father who he has very regular contact with. Okay. Yes. That's good. On the aspect of taking care of yourself, it's hard mm -hmm. because um, me time. Wh what is me time? When when are you getting me time when you need to be at home? <laughs> you actually forget, <laughs> forget about me. But mm. as I, as I said, because I am further along on the journey, yeah. getting me time has been a bit easier. Okay. A bit is yeah. So okay. getting involved in a few more things and mm. getting spaces where you can, because now he's he's going to school. Mm -hmm. He has a very regular regular schedule. Yeah. I know that if I take one day a week and he just leave him at home, he's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you know it gets easier with time. I think that's the the part that um, most people who have been on the journey for longer tell you. Mm -hmm. When you keep it consistent mm. and your child ages into the autism, you find a lot of the challenges go down. Uh -huh. If you did the interventions early, yes, that is what matters. Okay. So it gets easier as time goes by. Great. Yeah. Mm. What are you doing for self-care? <laughs> Well, it's, uh, what, what she's saying, me time is quite a challenge, Because yeah, eh? yeah. even when you have me time, you're thinking, like me, if I, I chose to have me time, I would be mm. thinking maybe it's up on the roof. Maybe he's, you know, because yeah. he's hyper. Yeah. So it's quite a challenge having mm -hmm. me time, eh? mm -hmm. especially for me because I'm still young in that journey. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, like uh, she has, I also have uh, support from uh, married couples. Mm -hmm. I am lucky. I'm a girl among, uh, I'm uh, the only daughter in the family. So uh -huh. I have, I'm spoiled for male figures, okay, that's nice. my brothers. That's nice. And... Uh, the community where I live, uh, there are so many, our caretaker, you mm. know those small, those people you might ignore in life, yeah. like your caretaker yes. and all, they understand the journey, they make it easy for me. Wow. And uh, kudos to my landlord who I have to always tell him, fence here, do this, do this, he might jump off, we might do that. Wow. So I feel I also have uh, quite a number of male figures who are with me in the journey. Okay. 
and I cannot complain. That's nice. Yeah, you have to look beyond yes. what you are not having. You where else can I find? You have to find love. Mm. Yeah, if you can't find it here, you look where love is. It's all over you. Okay. And sometimes we choose not to look. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Talking about finding love eh, mm. as we finish. Kwani, <laughs> 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 you can read my mind. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Yes, we can. You know where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. We, so I, I don't even have to do. go there. <laughs> uh -huh. I think we do. Uh -huh. okay. uh, is, is, is it something, is it something you, you think about? Is it something you would even consider getting in another relationship? Yes, I would consider it. Uh -huh. Uh, it is not something I have ruled off. Okay. But I do understand that the person, if there is a, is a person, mm -hmm. so you prepare yourself for two possibilities. Mm -hmm. Either there's no person completely, yeah. or there might be a person. Mm -hmm. And if there is a person, mm -hmm. you know that they need to be on board with the challenges that you have. Mm -hmm. They need to understand them 100%. And if that's not the case, then you accept the other course of action, which is no person. No person. And it's fine. Yeah. As she said, you find mm -hmm. love in very many places just because the um, uh, what is it called the the, the the relationship love is not there mm. there's so much love elsewhere okay yes yeah, uh -huh. yeah so much love you'll be spoiled for <laughs> it are you are you are you do you consider getting into another relationship <sighs> i don't know not currently not, not now currently, yeah yeah not now okay and yes, if I do, the person has to understand the journey I'm going through yeah. and has to accept mm. us the way we are. Okay. But not now. Okay. Currently, no. Currently, no. Yes. You know, there's another lady who was also going through challenges mm -hmm. from here till Tumbuktu. And she was asked a question and she laughed. <laughs> and she laughed? Yeah. You know her? <laughs> no. From the Bible. Oh. Her name is Sarah. <laughs> she laughed. She thought you guys are <laughs> But God has a way. But thank you. Yeah. Thank you to the both of you for coming because my time is up. Lucy, Caro, Modoni, mm -hmm. and uh, one boy, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing mm -hmm. for your sons. Yeah. Thank you for just uh, being there. Yeah. Some yeah. things we may take for granted, but God and honor, and he will keep giving you the strength. Okay. Amen. You know, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Especially for you, with yeah. the season that you are in. Yes, I am. Can I pray for you? <laughs> I've never done this, but okay. I want to pray for okay. both of you. That's okay. Okay. I dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for these amazing mothers and the work that they are doing, raising up boys who may have special needs because they are special. I pray for them that, Lord, you will continue to encourage them and to give them strength. I thank you, Lord, that they are present. And I thank you, Lord, that you are a present help in times of trouble. I pray for Lucy. I pray that, Lord, even with the season that she is in, continue to encourage her that, Lord, she will remember she is never alone. You're always with her. Give her courage and strength to keep pursuing this journey and to keep being there. Thank you for Mboi. This far you have brought her, my Father, Lord. Use her to encourage others as well. My Father, thank you for the time we've had together. We thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Wait, leo ni mefunga clinic na maombi. Watu wapone. Until next week, thank you for watching. Have a great day and God bless you. Thank you for watching. Remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get notified whenever we upload new fresh content every day. Stay tuned and enjoy fresh uplifting content.